first chapter, we created a very linear program, but people don't really live like that. We are constantly making choices or decisions that take us down a completely different path. For example, on map and navigation apps, when you want to get to a destination, they use a lot of different variables and calculations to give you their recommended route. That is highlighted in blue. However, they also show you other possible routes, highlighted here in gray, to get to the same location, but it might take longer. Each one of the routes is a decision or branch. This works the same way in code. The app doesn't know if the user will take a gray route. It also doesn't know if they're going by car or want to walk, but that doesn't really matter. If they pick a different route, then the new route becomes highlighted in blue, and the distance, arrival time, and directions change automatically. Notice the use of the word if. This is how we can make decision trees and branches in our algorithms. An algorithm is a process or set of rules to be followed in calculations or operations. Sounds fancy, but it's just the process or flow that inputs have to go through. Take a look at this decision tree of what should I wear. If it's sunny outside, then the next thing I'm going to look at is, well, is it greater than 80 degrees? If yes, then I'm most likely going to wear shirt and shorts. If no, then I'm probably going to wear a sweater with shorts. In programming, we do the exact same thing. But instead of saying yes and no, we say true and false. Now, some of you may not agree with some of the outputs in this decision tree. If it's sunny and 79 degrees, I'm not going to wear a sweater and shorts. That's totally fine. You are biased because your life experience has taught you to wear something else. But there are people in the world where 80 degrees is actually really cold. This is why we need to test all this stuff. Here's a theory we could have. In Brazil, because of the humidity and how hot it is year-round, whenever it's 80 degrees outside, people will wear pants and they won't go to the beach. I know that this is a terrible theory because I highly doubt that every person in Brazil will automatically wear pants, but how would we test this theory? We can break it into inputs. Input 1 is we have to be in Brazil. And input 2 is it's 80 degrees outside. The outputs we expect are that everyone is wearing pants and that no one goes to the beach. If we created tests for this, we would have a test case for every beach to make sure that no one arrived. We'd also have to make sure that anyone that goes outside is wearing pants. This is a silly example, of course, but it does tie into software testing because in testing, we form questions and theories and then use test cases to prove them or provide new insights. Whenever you test against known knowns, they are called checks. This is one form of testing. We have a basic theory about mathematical arithmetic. For example, a known known is that 1 plus 1 equals 2. But how do we know that we were taught correctly? How do we know that the computer sees it the same way? Using our maps example, how do we know that the newly selected route is now highlighted in blue without manually checking it every single time? How do we know it still takes us to our destination? This is where automated tests are awesome, but we need to design our theories and tests first. Test cases are used to answer our questions, prove our theories, and also test the behaviors and outcomes of our code. The formula for a test case is input plus output plus oracle, where oracle is your judgment based on the inputs and outputs. Put simply, a test case is a single test with inputs and outputs 
that can then be judged. Let's explore this concept with code. 